so I'm going to describe here a collaboration between the engineering school and a number of clinicians on the medical campus. We were initially approached by Dr. Jeremy Beitler, um, who is um, you know, in the Center for Acute Respiratory Failure, about sharing ventilators with two patients. Um, but uh, eventually, we've been in touch more regularly with Drs. Miller and Krigoff. Um, so the video that you see on the right was actually uh, developed by Dr. Beitler. Uh, he, is this, he developed a clinical protocol for sharing a ventilator. And what you're seeing on the right is a ventilator screen. Um, and to share it with two patients. And he actually got this protocol approved by New York State. Um, he, I presume, had to demonstrate you know, the feasibility showing is essentially this video. You can see that it's, uh, he added T connectors to put two patients on the ventilator. I'm gonna advance this video. The video itself is, is long, but uh, what you see here is two test lungs and these sensor boxes, which are made by Philips uh, called NM3s, which actually record what's happening to each test lung. So the, sensor, the sensors are the critical part. If you wanna actually see what each patient is doing, the ventilator is only able to tell you what one patient is doing. So if the ventilator is splitting the flow to two patients or more, you don't know exactly how much air is going to each patient. And so they had to match the patients so that they had similar lung capacities, similar lung compliance. Um, so they approached us about being able to replicate this box here that you see, because essentially, you know, Columbia's uh, hospital only had four of them, and Philips uh, discontinued making this product here in the United States. They were in the process of shifting their manufacturing uh, abroad. So essentially, we came in as an engineering team to see if we could replicate the system using components that are, in fact, widely available. That's the important thing, because you imagine everyone is rushing to purchase the standard components for these types of systems. So our goal was to develop a flow sensor, the hardware for detecting the pressure differences, the electronic hardware for measuring the voltages coming out, the software for converting this to the information that you see on the screen, the flow rate, the flow volume, the tidal volume, and the pressure. So um, we needed to detect the pressure, the flow rate, the inspiratory and expiratory tidal volumes, the uh, uh, respiratory rate. Uh, and we needed to, we were told specifically that the clinicians did not want to have to enter the patient room just to monitor their progress. They wanted a big display that they could see from across the glass doors and only walk in if there was a problem. And they wanted very loud alarms because they told us that uh, they had actually to vent the hallways, um, you know, with very loud fans, and they wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, they, they could hear the alarm from our system. So our original goal was to build five or ten of these here in-house on our campus and bring them up to the hospital for testing, get IRB approval, and then iterate on the design, and then maybe scale it up uh, for the 400 or so ventilators that the, our hospital yeah, I'm going to do it again. Um, okay, so I'll go over the flow sensor design quickly. So we, uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, Eric Green, can you mute yourself, please? Um, so this is the flow sensor that you see right here. Here is a transparent view. It's a very simple design. We have pressure ports that come out from here, and the air goes inspiratory from left to right, expiratory from right to left. And we designed it such that these components could fit into standard ventilator tubing. You see some of yes. the components that we got from the hospital. So this is the, actually, the actual 3D printed flow sensor, the flow meter. These are some of the electronics that we used. We needed to design circuit boards. And again, we wanted to find components that are available in large supply. That was like our constraint. But for us, large supply meant just meeting the needs of our hospital. So 400 to 800 ventilators you know, for each patient. Um, we needed to calibrate our flow meter, so we built our own system of air cylinders so that you can push a known amount of air through it. This is the flow rate that we were able to obtain from, from the sensor. This is the tidal volume. This was useful for calibrating the system. Then we wanted some more realistic, you know, behavior. Uh, not sure why the video is not starting automatically, but I'll try to start it here. So again, this is the flow sensor that you see here. These are solenoid valves that trigger air coming in and exhausting to atmosphere. The flow meter is responding to the pressure in this test lung. 
These are the electronics. Uh, again, these would eventually be printed on a circuit board. We have all those capabilities in our laboratories. And again, this is the big screen display. Right now, it's still showing voltages, but we were going to convert this to flow meters and all. And you can see that the profiles in the right window look more realistic, more similar to actual. But it says you cannot share screen while the others. Um, OK. So then what happened is yesterday afternoon, <laughs> Dr. Prioff uh, reported to us that Dr. Miller had now decided that the clinical trials that they did with three pairs of patients on ventilators had not been encouraging. Basically, you start out by assuming that the two patients, no, you, you, you pick the two patients to have similar tidal volumes and similar lung compliance, so similar state of uh, disease. But then if one progresses faster than the other, essentially you, it requires constant monitoring by the clinicians. And that just was not efficient. That defeats the purpose of splitting a ventilator because you wanna be able to walk away without constantly watching the patients. So yesterday afternoon we were told that, um, you know, Dr. Miller would like to stop focusing on this splitting of the ventilators and would like us to work with a team at MIT that has built this, you know, emergency ventilator from an MBU bag. Maybe you've heard about this one. Essentially, an MBU bag is squeezed by, you know, mechanical hands, and it's a, it's a low um, cost, uh, cheap components system. And this system was developed by a team of people at MIT. It's a large team. But the person that we interacted uh, with is Albert Kwan, who's an anesthesiologist that served as the clinical consultant to the MIT event team. Originally, he did not recommend the flow meter for their ventilator, and um, so, but then he was put in touch with Dr. Miller, and in consideration of FDA requirements, because they're doing a lot of pig studies, um, in vivo pig studies, so essentially, Dr. Miller convinced him that, you know, you really need to measure the flow. I mean, obviously, MIT engineers can design their own flow meters, but we already have it ready to go. So basically, their goal is to manufacture 500 to 1,000 ventilators per day, for worldwide distribution. Um, they have the manufacturing capabilities. They've identified the, their industrial co-sponsors. They're probably gonna start the production in a week or so, but they need to add you know, this flow meter in order to be able to measure the kind of information that's needed. So basically our new plan now is to work with the MIT event team. We reached out to them yesterday and the day before, and you know, we're starting the collaboration uh, but also, um, their machine is not intended necessarily just for the United States. It's um, intended to be distributed worldwide. So what they have is only a small display. It's an LCD display that just displays numbers. So we feel that for the needs of our doctors here at Columbia, we're probably going to still need to maybe interface their ventilator with our large display, make sure that we have the loud alarms. Here's the speaker attached to the display. Again, all low cost, widely available, and not principally you know, meant for ventilators, so they should not be uh, out of stock. And so we all agree that respiratory monitoring is an essential element when scaling ventilator production. So that's where we are, and I'm happy to answer any questions now.